Our reporting and coverage of a wide range of arts and culture have long been a hallmark of the PBS NewsHour, dating back to the very earliest days of the program. Tonight, we are proud to say we are expanding that coverage each week with a new series, Canvas. We'll continue to profile the exciting and emerging work of artists, writers, and creators, as we always have. But we'll be working to feature even more voices, new talents, and provocative ideas on the broadcast and online. We're starting this week with some of the artists and performers who've been honored with Oscar nominations this year. Jeffrey Brown launches our Canvas series with a conversation about one of this year's most nominated films, Vice, the story of Dick and Lynn Cheney. I want you to be my VP. I want you. You're my vice. Part comedy, part tragedy, all raw politics. Vice is a film for our own politically divided times. Maybe I can uh, handle some of the more mundane jobs, overseeing uh, bureaucracy, managing military, uh, energy, uh, foreign policy. That sounds good. Vice, of course, is Dick Cheney. And here we see his rise from Yale dropout and Wyoming lineman to Washington power player extraordinaire. Chief of staff for Gerald Ford, congressman, secretary of defense under George H.W. Bush, Halliburton CEO, and finally, George W. Bush's vice president. It's a portrait created by director Adam McKay. We went into it with an open mind. Uh, you, and, you did, really? Oh, absolutely. The whole idea of the movie was, who is this guy? How did he make the decisions that he made? McKay, whose last film, The Big Short, took on the 2007 financial crisis, makes no secret of his own liberal politics. My mom is definitely right wing. And I told her, I said, you know, mom, maybe don't see this one. <laughs> Christian Bale, in a remarkable physical transformation, plays Cheney, while Amy Adams plays his wife, Lynn. Can you feel it, Dick? Half the room wants to be us, the other half fears us. I know George is next in line, but after that, who knows? But while recent events and real people are the focus, Amy Adams says she approached it like any other film. I looked at it as a character study, and um, the, the way that the characters evolve from their early 20s to their 70s, and the way a relationship evolves, and the way that a marriage evolves. For me, the, the script was so unique and so individual, I, I found myself forgetting and until we started talking about the movie with the press that I, we had made something that had a political point of view. Still, she says, Lynn Cheney presented a unique challenge. People have a lot of opinions about, about her and about um, her politics, and so stepping aside from that and just really diving into the truth of who she was and where she came from and how, how not who is Lynn Cheney, but who was Lynn Cheney, and how did that create the story that then became what we know of her today. Does that mean divorcing yourself from the, the real Lynn Cheney, who is still alive, who is out there? Um, to some degree. Um, it's always tricky, you know, when you're playing someone who is real and alive because everyone, I mean, even if someone were to play me, it's not the me that you see in of front course, of you. And right. it's a curated public persona. You know, she's on book tours and doing interviews. It's not, I'm not in bed with Lynn Cheney. Right. You know, so I have to kind of figure out some, a different aspect of her personality. Here's my plan, right? Either you stand up straight and you get your back straight and you have the courage to become someone or I'm gone. McKay says he came to see Lynn Cheney as the linchpin of the movie. A lot of people in their hometown in Casper, Wyoming, to this day still say that whoever Lynn Vincent would have married would have become president or vice president. So it was hard to ignore that, that Lynn was really the engine of Dick Cheney. I think there's a moment where Lynn and Dick almost become the same person. When you really go to that vice presidency, he's totally internalized her ambition and her smarts, and they really are the same person. 
Critics have praised the acting performances, but a number have raised questions about McKay's portrait of Cheney as a man devoid of any conservative beliefs or political ideology beyond the quest for power. The question coming into it was how did these people end up in this circumstance where they were advocating for torture or you know, uh, tweaking the intelligence to invade Iraq, which we now know is a, a, a fact that that happened. So coming into it, we were open to the idea of who are these people. And in the research we did, we did not find a core ideology. So there are some people that interpret the actions of Cheney uh, through an ideological lens. I just don't agree. I don't see that kind of consistency. You tell us at the top of the film that it is mostly true or as true as we could make it, and you say, we tried our effing best. <laughs> but what, what does that mean? Anything we're showing has been fact-checked, and we're not putting it out there lightly, but what we're acknowledging is there's just a lot about Dick Cheney you're never gonna know. He's a secretive guy. He kind of prides himself on it, so we just wanted to acknowledge that there's dark matter within the movie. Uh, at the head of the movie and make a little bit of a joke about it. But I, I definitely have a lot of faith in the audience that you can feel the history when it clicks. Adam McKay says he spoke with his actors during filming about the partisan blowback the movie would likely face in today's political climate. Amy Adams adds this. It is unusual for me. What's interesting is that I have close family on both, I have close family on one side of the aisle and close family on the other. So these are conversations that we have around the table all the time and it's something that I think is really important. And so whether or not I, I talk about it a lot outside of my own dinner table, I, I, I think it's the conversations are gonna move us forward. So I'm happy to be a part of something that again created the conversation. Vice competes for Best Picture and seven other Oscars at the upcoming Academy Awards. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Los Angeles.